Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here, and uh, it's a real honor to actually join such a esteemed group of faculty uh, for the real truth about health. Um, I'm Dr. William Lee. I'm a physician, scientist, author, and, uh, and I study food as medicine, but I have a background really in biotechnology. And I, what I'm going to do uh, in the next uh, hour or so is to walk you through how I've actually arrived uh, looking at diet and health. And in terms of real truth, uh, what I do is I follow biology, I follow physiology, and I look at pathology because that's actually how we actually um, really do uh, uh, medicine and try to discover things with medicine. So um, I'm going to actually uh, uh, start by sharing with you um, uh, the uh, uh, background of my um, world of eating to beat disease. Uh, uh, this is sort of like an idea that I've actually had for about 30 years or so, but I only in the last decade began putting some serious um, investment in really doing the actual research itself. And what I've discovered about food and health is um, it's not just about the food, which is what we always hear uh, about, you know, a super food or a super supplement. It's really about how our bodies respond to what you put inside it. When you put something good inside it, our bodies respond in beneficial ways. When we actually put something harmful inside it, not surprising, it responds in negative ways. So what I'm actually going to share with you is sort of a, 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 a diff slightly different way of looking at diet and health and nutrition, um, but from the lens of, of really how we actually uh, design interventions in medicine. So uh, without further ado, let me just kind of introduce the concept of food as medicine. Most of us has heard about this, but the real question is, um, where does this idea come from? Uh, most people will attribute the term food as medicine or let food be thy medicine to Hippocrates. And that attribution is correct. Uh, it's only an attribution. We don't really know if Hippocrates said it, um, but I will tell you that in the time of Hippocrates, there were no sophisticated medicines. And so food was viewed very much as part of uh, how we actually healed ourselves and stayed healthy. And that's really the spirit of it. Um, this has got a long history uh, behind it, but what's different now is that we actually have science. Um, uh, I don't need to actually say too much more about this picture other than to say that um, it wasn't too many years ago that uh, uh, picnics uh, uh, at the White House were uh, filled with uh, the classic American uh, uh, cuisine, uh, if you could call it that. And, uh, and this is sort of the standard American or Western diet uh, as we call it. There is really no standard, but um, America is kind of a melting pot. But we actually uh, uh, associate um, comfort food, uh, convenience food, uh, industrialized food with sort of a general staple that we now know in 2021 is not optimal for our health. And we're beginning to actually figure out not just that plant-based foods are better for you or that seafood with omega-3 uh, fatty acids are beneficial for you, but really why are they beneficial? And that's really the, the I think the, the key point of what I wanna make is asking the whys, not just the what, but the whys. And then there's also the hows. So um, this is actually uh, from an editorial written by my friends and colleagues, uh, uh, Dr. Dariush Matsafarian, who's the Dean of the Friedman School of Nutrition at Tufts and Dan Glickman, who is a former secretary, US Secretary of Agriculture. And they remarked um, uh, in 2019 that the food that we are actually promulgating is actually contributing to our bad health and it's a leading cause of mortality. So, you know, uh, when you look at a statement like this, it's really hard to internalize it because a broad statement may not feel like it applies to you. Uh, and what, what I want to share with you is that is something that has happened to us that's really made us reconceptualize our health. Now, this is actually a image taken from the 1600s, uh, a painting of, uh, of, a, of a family uh, 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 in Venice, Italy, uh, where uh, the great plague of Northern Italy swept through uh, parts of Europe. And in Italy, people were seeing um, uh, folks dying out in the street. They had no idea what was going on. So they all ran into their houses, homes or stone homes. They locked themselves in they were afraid to go out and they were all waiting for the town crier to tell them it was safe to go back out into the village square again. 
doctors were wearing these um, long beak-like masks. They were masked and inside the mask was herbs that actually smelled um, nice. They didn't smell like death. Um, there was oregano, there was thyme, there was rosemary, um, uh, frankincense. These were the herbs to really mask the smell of death, but the doctors didn't really have a good understanding of what was happening either. And they milled around from family to family, tending to the ill, um, trying to minister to them the best they could, and yet people were still dying. So there was a lot of fear around. If any of this sounds familiar to you uh, from our experience, collective world experience from last year, um, uh, this is exactly the image I thought of when the lockdown happened in, in March 2020 um, as the World Health Organization declared a pandemic. We had no idea what was happening in the uh, emergency rooms and the ICUs. We all had to lock down. We we're not sure what to do. There was an order to wear a mask, but we didn't really understand the, 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 the phone, uh, forms of transport, uh, of, of um, uh, transportation of the virus. And um, people were uh, either well or they were sick or they were dying and we didn't really know who, what was going on. So what was amazing to me was that in 2020 and 2021, we were in the same situation that people during the Renaissance and even before that, during the medieval era were in, which is vulnerable to illness. Um, there, there was and still is very few um, uh, interventions for COVID-19. As there were back in the plague, there was nothing to do uh, for the plague. And so here is uh, humankind um, uh, vulnerable to diseases that can actually spring up outside of the body as well as inside of the body. Those are the chronic illnesses um, that we talked about, the non-communicable diseases. And we don't have all the answers. And so people just don't know what to do. Well, in uh, last spring in 2020, I decided that we actually did have something to our advantage and that was science. And because I'm a scientist, I'm a vascular biologist, um, I wound up actually trying to figure out what I could do as a scientist to get at the bottom of this. And you're gonna say, what does this have to do with eating to beat disease? Um, I wanna actually tell you a little story now of my journey within the last year and how I brought my career uh, experiences through this to really try to help understand what was going on with the pandemic. And in so doing, having a, a sort of some doors open and light bulbs go on um, in terms of how we can actually um, do better to eat to beat um, uh, disease. Now I'm showing you um, a, a partial list of things that were available to us in 2020 that we were looking for uh, uh, to be able to treat COVID. Vaccines, which only became available in 2021, antivirals, steroids, uh, anti-inflammatories and monoclonal antibodies. What are we missing here? What are we missing? We're actually missing food. And yet before we had vaccines, antivirals, um, uh, and all these other uh, more sophisticated treatments, we were all going to the market, buying what we wanted to buy, um, shuttling it back to our homes, locking the door and cooking it in front of our, um, uh, with our families. And we all became reacquainted with our stovetops, our pantries and our refrigerators. And the time we went out to the market was intended to be short bursts to seek um, uh, and, and secure and then bring it back in. Nobody wanted to go to the hospital. Nobody wanted to go to the doctor's office. And frankly, the doctor in the hospital had very little to offer. And this is where actually the idea of food actually joins this realm of fancy treatments because mother nature actually has already laced into her foods a series of very sophisticated chemicals, natural chemicals, bio, um, bioactives that actually influence the body's health defense systems. And although we are still working hard to find new treatments uh, for COVID-19, um, in fact, food was the remedy that we were actually uh, applying to our bodies to boost our health, prevent um, disease, treat diseases, um, and help to recover all along through the pandemic. And so that's a, a very important point really is that, you know, this human experience that every uh, individual on the planet experienced in 2020 led us to actually consider that, that when that hospitals and doctors didn't always have the answers and yet we still had to eat. So what is it in foods that can actually be helpful to us? Well, Take a look at these pictures that I took myself as I traveled um, uh, uh, in my around the world of my career. When I go to a city, the first thing I do um, uh, is I will go to their local market, their farmer's market, or in the case of Europe,
their village market. And one of the things I love to do is to take in the sights and the sounds. And the sights are colors. I mean, look at these beautiful colors. This is Mother Nature's cornucopia rainbow. Uh, and the rainbow of fruits and vegetables reflects the, uh, the diversity of bioactives that are actually present in these foods. But, uh, foods. In fact, most of the natural dyes that, that lead to these colors are in fact bioactives that help the plant uh, to um, give it, the plant some survival advantage, whether it's a natural insecticide or uh, an attractant for pollinators uh, to come spread um, uh, the, the, the pollen. Um, but when humans actually made that step to pick up that food and eat it, those plant-based bioactives had a new job description. And that job was to actually interact with human cells because they have no choice. And our human cells have to respond in particular ways. And that's what we're gonna talk about today is how does the body respond to food when we, when we put stuff inside it? And why, it is, why is it that some of these foods that we know, plant-based foods are actually good for us? So I wanna, that's what I wanna share with you.